uh, we're going to go through uh, some ways to connect your MPC with your SP404 Mark II. I just recently uploaded a video uh, showing this awesome combination right here. And uh, I had so many people ask me how I'm routing my signal. I know a lot of people are thinking of picking this up and we're just curious on how is he doing this connection? It's very simple. So this video, I think, is going to be short, depending on um, the different ways I show how to route this up. And I actually just saw this and noticed this, but this desk that I have this on top of fits my MPC Life 2 exactly to the desk. So it fits perfectly. And uh, right now, I have the MPC1, the SP404, and this actually matches. So I think this is the same size as the MPC Live Mark II, and also about the same price as the MPC Live Mark II. And also, do not forget, I have links down in the description of this video uh, to get everything you'll need to connect these two. I'm going to put uh, the MPC, the SP404, the cables that you might want, an SD card that you might want to pick up. Everything will be linked down in this video, so if you're looking for pieces to get to make these two work together, make sure you check out those links to Zounds. Uh, so that is my pl favorite place to shop at when it comes down to audio equipment because they do ship out your gear without doing any background checks. You can make payments. Meanwhile, you're already exploring your device. Now, there is different ways uh, to connect these two devices. Uh, my favorite way, and I'm actually going to go through the first uh, connectivity right here since this is the one that I use the most, is just simply, and I'm going to do my best right here to show show with these camera angles, uh, but just bear with me. I have the MPC-1 right here, and in the back of the MPC-1, you just are going to have your main outs, your left and right outputs, which would connect to your pair of speakers, or that would go straight into your interface if you want to record that. Uh, the way I have this right now, I have my main outputs, left and right, going into the inputs of your SP404 uh, 1 and 2, or left and right, and then I have the outputs of the SP404 Mark II going straight to you guys. Uh, the way I'm recording everything and printing everything down is I have my Apollo interface, so I'm actually connecting the output of my SP404 into the Apollo interface and printing my audio, and that's how you are listening to what we're about to do right now. So very simple. Uh, once you have your SP404, you would actually not hear anything because we have to select uh, ex external source and engage this. Once we engage that, now we could hear signal coming through. So I think it's going to be better if I just lay something down right here on the grid just so we can have something to listen to as we demonstrate this back and forth. Now, before I hit record, I do want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, DistroKid. So when you sign up to DistroKid, you will have resources like Mixia. What Mixia is, it is a way to master your tracks if you do not know anything about mastering because that is a whole different process on its own. Well, with Mixia, with an additional $100 a year, you're able to upload and master as many tracks you want for that year. It is so simple to do and it does a very good job. You simply just upload a track right here select the track that you want to upload hit open and it will start a rendering a mastered file for you now once it's done rendering you have your original track as you can see the waveforms it is not mastered versus the mastered track which it just seems a lot thicker a lot fuller a lot louder and down here you have simple parameters you have your intensity how uh, loud you want your master to be as you can see your waveforms are only going to amplify and you don't want it too loud you can go a little lower and it becomes a little softer you can keep it in the middle and it stays right there in the middle. You also have your EQ options. This is how bright you want your master to be or how warm your master will sound. I'm going to go ahead and hit play and mess around with the intensity so you can listen to what this does right here. <laughs> Now let's go to the EQ option where we can see how bright or how warm we want the entire master to be. And now, once we have this done, I could go ahead and compare the mastered version versus the original upload that I did. Let's go back and forth with these two. Yeah. 
yeah, that is a night and day difference. So if you are not too familiar with mastering yourself, go ahead and sign up to DistroKid using my 7% discount, which will be down in the description of this video. So go ahead and use the link down in the description and sign up today. And now let's go ahead and lay down some drums. And if you are asking what uh, kit I'm using right here, this is uh, from Marco Polo is the latest uh, sample pack that he has released in the MPC store. Go down in the link of this video. I'll leave a link right there so you guys could shop for it if you guys enjoy the sounds that you're hearing. Yeah. All right, so that alone sounds good. And on, honestly, like the Marco Polo uh, drum kits or sound, uh, expansion packs, they're so good. Uh, if you guys, this is a whole different topic, but uh, th those sample packs or expansion packs just sound well put together. So anything you throw on your grid, it just comes together very, very nice. Uh, back to the way we have this routed. Uh, again, I'm coming straight out of the MPC, uh, just left and right into the SP404. So the reason why this is my favorite setup is because first is the most simple setup and it's very easy to start having fun right away. As you saw, I have a two bar loop. I hit play and right away, uh, I'm monitoring through my SP404. I could go ahead and start just adding some of these filters. <laughs> This is awesome because you are obviously uh, having fun with your beat, going back and forth and having a good time. Uh, w the reason why I also like this is because you could jump into your track mutes. So now that we're in our track mutes, I have track one, where is my drums, track two is my sample, and track three is my bass line. When I have these tracks right here in track mute, I could go ahead and drop some of these tracks out. So let's say I wanna start with drums and bass. It just goes like that, and then I can add my sample. And I can start writing effects as I'm muting certain tracks. Woo. This is the most simple setup. It is very fast. I just play with the track mutes as I'm writing. I'm, I'm interacting. I'm performing my track as I'm just playing through my track. And it's so funny because this is just two bars. I mean, I would obviously go a little longer, have an intro, a bridge, a verse, and you have a lot to play with. Right now, I'm just playing with two tracks, but I'm adding variation to what I have going on. Now, another really cool way of combining uh, your MPC with your 404 is going to be the same way. Uh, we have the outputs of the MPC going to the inputs of the SP404. And what we can do is we can stem out, uh, let's say, the drums, the sample, and the bass into each individual pads right here. So what I can do is go to track mute. It's going to solo just the drums. And I hit record. And I'm going to record into pad 13 just those drums. Once I have that recorded there, I can actually go in and chop uh, this performance up just so I can make sure I have two loops selected. Go ahead and just uh, truncate this right here as we have those two bars selected. And we're gonna do the same thing with our, our sample chops and our bass. Now to speed things up, I actually have the same method right here but with these pads up here. This is my sample and it's just looping two bars. And then my drums. Yeah. And then bass. Now, once you have those three elements right there, or however how many elements you might have on your MPC, me, I tend to always be using, well, not always, but most of the time I use sample, drums, and bass. That's like the foundation that I could make something sound very nice with those three. So what I will do is once I have these three elements right here on these three different pads, I go into pattern select, 
And right here, I'm able to record this progression right here. Now I have that uh, recorded into pattern one. Now, if you're completely lost on the whole complexity of the SP404, do not freak out. Don't worry. There's so many videos out there that will break down. I just do not want to be doing a whole entire breakdown on how to, like this is not a how to do pattern record or anything like that. I'm just showing the possibilities. Once I have this recorded into pattern one, I can separate those elements and put uh, the drums in effects bus one or effects bus two, and I can really really start having fun with these. So in this instance, I have my drums on effects bus two and my sample and my bass on effects bus one. So now when I'm selected in effects bus two, I'm able to add some note repeat just to the drums and leave the sample and bass alone. And then if I want to add like a high pass filter to the sample and bass, I can affect those with bus one and leave the drums alone. And that honestly is even better of a combination you get. Now, there's so many videos online of people just writing these effects that look so fun. Now, again, it takes practice to really learn how to lock these in. Uh, for me, uh, I feel like it's very fun for me, but I'm not the best at writing these effects. But still, even if you're not, I guess, professional at using these effects, it could still add some variation and some spice to your track, which always could break the monotonous repetition from a beat that could be a bit boring. Just adding some effects every other bar uh, could switch things up and make it very fun. Now, you might be saying, uh, okay, so what next? Like, we have these effects, we're able to go back and forth and play with these two. Uh, how do we print this or how do we go about and uh, put this out, right? Uh, for we can all hear it. <laughs> the way I do it, uh, there's so many different ways, but the way I do it is I come straight out of the SP404, just the outputs left and right, and I go right into my interface. As long as it has two inputs, which I highly recommend you have a stereo input uh, interface if you have one, uh, you connect right into your interface and you can print that straight into Logic, uh, GarageBand, Whatever your DAW of choice is, just arm those two inputs, hit uh, record, and start writing your uh, beat through and printing it. That's the way I do it. It's probably not the recommended way because you are printing everything as a whole, as a two-track uh, going straight into your DAW, and you cannot mix it after. You could master it, but you could no longer mix if the drums were a little too loud. That's already baked into the two-track. So if you want to go ahead and do that, you just want to make sure you have your mix set properly in your MPC going into your SP404. So on your SP404, you don't really have to get too technical with mixing because the 404, I don't feel like it has the flexibility to do deep diving and mixing. The MPC, however, uh, this does have a lot of tools to get a good sounding mix. They have EQs, compressors, uh, your levels, like all that stuff, panning. Uh, it's very convenient to do it with the MPC. Now, uh, one last way that you could print your track, uh, you could also on the SP404, this has a SD reader right here. So you could also just record your track into your SD card and call it a day. I don't know how to do that because I've never done it like that. I always print to my DAW and that's just my favorite way of doing it. Uh, that's the way I recommend. Just make sure you feel good with your mix. Uh, if you want to get technical with mixing, go ahead and do that. But that's going to be a rabbit hole that you will never be satisfied. If the track feels good to you, if you're happy with your track, export it print it. Yes, there's not, there is going to be a lot of mistakes, but the more you do it, repetition, the more you get used to this process, the better you're going to get and the better your mixes will become. So do not try to perfect your mix in the first try. 
because it's not going to happen and you're going to be one of those types of people that never puts out any track because it's not ready yet. So make sure you just have fun. Uh, export one track, the second, the third, the fourth, and I guarantee you in a year from now or two years from now, you're going to listen to your first export and you'll be like, man, that, that sounds so, so different from what you're doing now. So uh, don't forget, have fun, have a good time. Uh, I'm, I'm having fun actually filming these videos and just uh, interacting with you. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, track uh, in this video right here. If you guys did, make sure you guys give this a thumbs up. And also do not forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're not already subscribed. Thank you. You have a blessed day. I'll catch y'all on our next video. Peace.